Here we go. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to a weed-free lawn edition of the live lawn care live stream. So today we're gonna to do something different. I wanted to start doing some prep for fall pre-emergent season and want to share some tips for you guys as far as how to get a weed-free lawn. You know, really when it comes to weeds, the best, the best offense really is a good defense sometimes, right? So when it comes to weeds, preventing weeds in the first place is often better than getting out there and trying to treat them after the fact. It's certainly a lot less expensive. So what I'm gonna cover in this, uh, this quick walkthrough, and we'll probably take some questions here as we get towards the end, is uh, when to apply, what to apply, and then finally, how to go about applying it. So it's gonna be a fairly short video, but still fun as far as getting into, you know, ways to keep keeping weeds out of, out of your lawn. And again, I'm, and unlike my, a lot of my normal content, I'm going to cover and discuss both warm season and cool season grass. So a lot of the comments we get as far as, you know, always, always only focusing on uh, warm season people and forgetting about the cool season guys, this time we're gonna talk about you guys as well. All right, so let's get into it. So the first uh, thing is, question is, when to apply. When do you, when do you apply pre-emergent? So really there are two times of the, out of the year when I think it's a great idea to do it, in the spring and in the fall. We're coming up on the fall, so this video is, makes sense for that. But really in the fall, when soil temps are crossing 75, 70 degrees going cooler, that's the window for you to apply your, your fall pre-emergent. So really now through the month of September is, is when the window really opens for getting ahead of getting your pre-emergent uh, applications done. Again, that's a, that's a general, uh, general guidance, really the, the way to know for sure as far as the best time to apply is to get like a, a soil thermometer, meat thermometer, and check your, your soil temps. And when the average soil temps over say a four or five day period is 70 degrees going cooler, that's when you know, the window's opening up for when you wanna get your pre-emergent done. For cool season grass, the, the window is um, when before soil temps cross 55 degrees. So typically in the southeast United States, most of the country, at least the south anyway, uh, that, that is more the February, March time frame. But again, th like I said with cool season grass, the way to know for sure is to use your soil thermometer or get on Google and say average soil temps, my zip code, and there are weather stations that'll tell you what the, the average soil temps are in your area. So, but as a, as a general rule for the spring, um, uh, uh, February, March, and for the fall, like where we are now, August, September. Okay, so now let's break into some of the, you know, some of the easier options. So we're going to start from easy and go to more complicated, a little more, a little more involved. All right. So for easy, right? You're just someone that's just getting into your lawn. You want to keep weeds out of your lawn. An easy way to do that with pre-emergent is to use one of these granular options. So I've got here uh, prodiamine and dithiapyr. I think this guy's the dithiapyr. Um, but, the, but these two guys are granular options, really easy to apply. The only thing you're gonna really need to put them down on your lawn is a broadcast spreader. So I use the Earthway 2050P, that's my favorite, it's one I, I love, but whatever you have, uh, you know, if it's a general or a very, a very commonly used spreader, um, on the, in the label that's included with these granular um, pre-emergents, there'll be calibrations for your particular spreader. So you should be good to go. Now the question is, what should I go with? Between prodiamine or dithiapyr? Which of the two is, is better, worse? And, you know, what's, what's, what should you use in your lawn? What you tend to find is prodiamine tends to be a few dollars cheaper than dithiapyr. Um, but the benefit of dithiapyr is if you have a lawn that is, is um, where you fight with a lot of crabgrass. So say you're in the Southeast United States where crabgrass is really a thing, you know, it's a thing that we really fight with. I'm sure people up north have deal with it too. Then dithiapyr is perhaps the option that you may want to, to lean towards. The, the price difference between them is not, it's normally less than $10 a bag, so it's not a night and day difference, but that, that is one consideration. Whereas prodiamine will prevent crabgrass, just like dithiapyr will, um, dithiapyr has the ability to kill young crabgrass. So if some crabgrass has already started growing in your lawn and you wanted to have a chance of getting rid of it, dithiapyr will do that, whereas prodiamine won't. And either of these are gonna work on your cool season lawn or warm season lawn. This is easy mode. This is the, this is the way to go if, you're, if you are just, you know, just trying to get a pre-emergent down. Now, let's say you have a cool season lawn, right? We're gonna, we're gonna now get into some more advanced options and we're gonna, we're gonna break it up into cool season guys and then warm season guys. Because if I try and explain them both at the same time, it's gonna get a bit confusing. So for cool season guys, if your goal is just to prevent weeds in your lawn, like you have no plans of doing a fall overseed or a fall renovation, then straight prodiamine, like one of these guys, or if you want to go for the, the liquid option, you've got, um, we've got options here as far as 
this guy goes, this is a, a small five ounce bottle, or if you have a larger property, property, then you have the five pound jug. So either one of these will work as far as, as far as prodiamine goes on your, on your cool season line. If all you care about is keeping weeds away, right? But now if you plan to overseed or plan to seed or do any kind of renovation, that's going to be a problem because if you apply prodiamine or dithiopair, either one of these guys, they are going to interrupt germination for about three to four months. So that's going to totally blow up your plans as far as being able to seed this fall. So a good option instead of that is a product like Tenacity. So I'll show you that. Tenacity is really a, a post-emergent herbicide that has pre-emergent qualities to it. So the nice thing about Tenacity is that while it will kill weeds that are actively in growing in your cool season uh, lawn, it also will act, behave as a pre-emergent for about three to four weeks. If you're lucky, you know, that four week time frame, but in most cases for three weeks or so, so it's going to prevent weeds from growing in your lawn. So if, if it's a situation where, hey, you know, I'm on, I wanna clean up the lawn a bit and then prepare for a, a, a seed for the fall, then tenacity, tenacity is your jam. Now, um, it, the, the, the label does call for, um, for using a surfactant with it if your goal is to, is to ma mainly use the, the post-emergent qualities. If you're trying to use it as pre-emergent, which is what we're going for, the, the theme of this video, in that case you would not use surfactant. You would not need to use surfactant if your goal is to apply this and then water it in. So you'll get some kill off of, um, of actively growing weeds, but the primary reason why you'd be using it then is to prevent new growth over that three, three to four week period while you're preparing to do your, uh, your, your seeding project. All right, so and as far as um, tenacity goes, as far as rates go, there's, there's, there's several um, different rates on the, as far as the, you can use with this product, but if you're using it for spot spraying, um, half an ounce, half a teaspoon, sorry, not half, half an ounce, half a teaspoon with a gallon of water is the way you're gonna wanna go. So they, they include this nice handy syringe here that you can see is very handy. It's labeled for the amount of water and the amount of, and the amount of, um, of, of product that you need, to, you need to mix with that. So guys, once I get through this, once we get through this, we're going to, I'm, gonna, I'm going to switch back and we're gonna talk about, I'll, I'll take a few questions on the show as well, but I just wanna get through the, um, through the, the, the main spiel. So that, that's tenacity if you want to, your goal is to prepare for a fall seeding project. All right, all right. Now let's move over to the warm season guys. And guys, here's the thing, the, the cool season guys have probably checked out at this point. So I'm gonna let you guys know, we have a lot more options when it comes to both preventing and actively killing weeds in our lawn. We're the cool guys. They don't even realize, but we really are the cool guys when it comes to lawn care. All right, so as your basis product, Prodiamine is still gonna be your go-to. As far as the guy that's gonna do the heavy lifting to prevent weeds in your lawn, Prodiamine either in the five ounce or the five pound jug, either one of these guys is gonna be what you're gonna to wanna to use as far as your pre-emergent. Now, one of the, the weeds that is the bane of my existence anyway, I'm sure it's also a problem for you guys, is a, is a weed called annual bluegrass, also known as poannua. So what you can do with prodiamine is you can mix two additional products with it and they'll all mix together really nicely. They'll all go down nicely. There's no, you know, there's no weird interactions or anything like that. I've used this, this combination a, a few times in the past and it, it works wonderfully. So the first active ingredient, the first product we're gonna talk about that we're gonna mix along with prodiamine is one called Princep. So this is the active ingredient of Simazine, is what this guy is. And then the other product we're gonna mix with it is a Mazaquin or Image. You've probably seen this if you've been to any of your big box stores. This guy's commonly on a scene on the shelf there. So Image and um, Simazine, uh, so Image and, and, and Princep, either one of those will, or both of those together will work well. Now as far as rates, um, the application rate for this will be a quarter or three quarters of an ounce, 0.75 fluid ounces uh, mixed with one gallon of water over a thousand square feet. The rate for image, now per the label rate, they will tell you to, to apply it at two and a half ounces per thousand square feet. Because we're gonna be mixing it along with Princep and along with Prodiamine, you can actually back the rate down a little bit. So if you wanna go down with a rate of two ounces with a gallon of water over a thousand square feet, then you're gonna be good to go. So 0.75 per thousand with a gallon of water, two ounces uh, per thousand with a gallon of water, and then for Prodiamine, the max rate on Prodiamine is 0.83 um, dry ounces, because this is a water dispersible granule product, um, is 0.83 ounces uh, per, per year. So if you're planning to use Prodiamine again in the spring, 
um, what you'd want to do is cut that in half. So go out with use a user rate of 0 0.40 ounces of, 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 of prodiamine along with the rates that are already listed for image and for print set. Um, the, the, the thing with the with, that's nice about all these is that they need to be watered in to work. So as far as a combination, a post-emergent and pre-emergent herbicide combination that works really well together, only for warm season grass, and I need to say that again, cool season guys, if y'all are still watching, I know you guys, are, I would imagine you probably checked out by now, but if you're still watching, do not spray image and princep along with prodiamine on your lawn, on your cool season lawn. You will damage and or possibly kill it. Prodiamine is the only thing you guys can use it that's safe for your cool season grasses. If you have um, Bermuda grass, zoysia grass, St. Augustine, even St. Augustine, this will work on, believe it or not. Uh, that is where these guys, this combination um, can, can, can really help out and work well. Okay, so we've covered the when. We've covered the, uh, the what to apply, now let's cover the how to apply. So these products, again, with the, with the granulars, all you're gonna need is a broadcast spreader. That's all you need to be able to, to, to put these down. Fairly easy, again, the guys, nice folks at Yard Mastery have done a great job including, including calibrations for your most common spreaders on there. If you have problems, you can't figure it out, drop me an email and I will look up a, a calibration chart that I have, a conversion chart, and I'll do my best to get you all situated from that standpoint. All right, but for these guys, once you're moving into the liquid products, you're going to need something like this. Now, this is a backpack sprayer. Um, don't get too intimidated by this. This is one that from the, the nice folks at Yard Mastery. It's a four-gallon backpack sprayer. And one thing you'll notice is when I was talking about these various products, right, the various products, I was, um, I was referring to X percentage or X fluid ounces or X dry ounces with a gallon of water over 1,000 square feet. So if we're, the reason for that is because the manufacturers of the herbicides um, give, in most cases, specify a dilution rate of one gallon per thousand square feet. That allows you to get good coverage. It prevents, um, you know, prevents over application, prevents a lot of issues. So um, just stick with that. So with a, a sprayer like this, where we've got a four gallon backpack sprayer, if we're listening to the rule of one gallon, one gallon of product mix per thousand square feet, this four gallon backpack sprayer is gonna cover 4,000 square feet, right? So what that means now is that if you're going to use, let's say, prodiamine, let's say you're cool season guys, we're talking to the cool season guys now. If you're just gonna go with just straight prodiamine and you're gonna go with the low, um, low rate for prodiamine on cool season grass, which is 0.185 ounces, uh, you're gonna take that rate and multiply it by four. So let's say this is rounded up to 0.2. You can take that rate and multiply it by four. So you would use 0.8 dry ounces of prodiamine along with four gallons of water. And that's gonna give you 4,000 square feet of coverage. So the only thing to really keep in mind is no matter which, which of these products you're using, whatever the rate is that's, that's labeled for 1,000 square feet, you're gonna multiply that times four to cover the mythical you know, 4,000 square foot, square foot lawn. The other thing you want to consider is when it comes to pre-emergent applications, right, we are doing, um, they're, they're soil based, you want them to get down in the soil. So as far as having the correct tip, that's going to, to be pretty important too. So you'll see here, I've got a white tip, this is the flood jet tip from T-Jet. What this is going to do is it's going to produce a larger droplet size, which is going to help the, the liquid product get past the foliar, get down to the soil where it can really do its work. So. You can use some of the air induction tips if that's all you got, but really you want to use, I mean, if you really want to try to do it right, get a flood jet tip. These guys are not that expensive. In the description of the live stream, once you guys get done here, uh, that's where you can go get, get all kitted out. I'm gonna have links to everything I've spoken about here. So really, a flood jet tip is, is gonna be money as far as getting you taken care of and getting a good application uh, of, your, of your liquid products. I mean, now guys, I got a bonus for you. Because everything I've gone through right now seems like a lot of work, right? I mean, the, the granular's not so bad, but definitely the liquids seems like a bit of work, right? And what happens if you want literally, in my opinion, the best pre-emergent, the best pre-emergent you can use on warm season grass, and you don't, find, you don't mind spending a few extra dollars to be able to get it? Now, that's where this guy comes in. So this is a little bonus I wanna have for you guys. This is only for warm season grass. Cool season guys, don't get jealous. But what we're talking about here is a product called Spectacle Flow. Whereas these guys, the prodiamine in the bat and the, the granular and also in the um, water source granule form will last you about three months, four months if, you, if you're fortunate as far as prevention, Spectacle Flow, when applied properly, will give you coverage up to eight months. So it's a really good product. It covers POA, it covers, it covers a, a, a huge gamut of weeds, crabgrass, I mean, you name it, this will prevent it in warm season grass. Don't put this on, on, warm, on cool season grass. The, the only downside to it is it's expensive. 
Uh, at the last time I checked, this is going for around $300 a bottle, so it's quite expensive. But the thing is, the small bottle, which is an 18 ounce bottle, right, this guy here, 18 ounce bottle uh, is going to, it's going to cover you, it's going to cover your friends, it'll probably cover like all your buddies, you guys can go in together on this. Because the application rate for Spectacle Flow on, on St. Augustine, and I want to say Centipede, the low, app, the low rate is 0 0.10, so a tenth of a fluid ounce mixed with a gallon of water over a thousand square feet. So this stuff is highly, highly, highly concentrated. It doesn't take a whole lot to be able to get a great result. Now if you have a hybrid Bermuda uh, lawn um, or a um, or a zoysia grass lawn. Oh, actually, no, the, the rates for 0.10 is for, is for St. Augustine and common Bermuda. Now, if you have hybrid Bermuda or zoysia grass, that is where you can bump the rate up to 0.2 fluid ounces per thousand square feet, right? So you can go a little bit heavier on the rate or actually double the rate for hybrid Bermuda and, um, and zoysia. Now, a little hack, right? Because really measuring out 0 0.10 fluid ounces is kind of difficult. Like finding measuring cups to be able to do that is not easy. So what I do, and I'll show you guys a little trick here, is I take an old Primo Max bottle. So see this bottle is Primo Max, is, is, was Primo Max, is all empty now. And I cleaned it out, labeled it with Perspectical Flow, because if you look on there, the measuring cup that's on here, it's very accurate, has got measurements in tenth of an ounce increments. So for measuring Spectacle Flow, for using Spectacle Flow, this is great. Again, the big thing is here is to make sure you label it so you don't mix it up with anything else. But as far as having a great measuring cup for measuring out this product, again, 0.10 for, for common, and then uh, 0.2 for for your hybrid Bermuda grass, uh, this is an easy, an easy way to go about it. Just something to keep in mind if you already have a bottle of Primo and you want to be able to repurpose this as a measuring cup. So cool guys, that is what I wanted to share with you. I mean, the, uh, a lot of this stuff is, is, fairly, is fairly easy to do. It seems kind of intimidating. But again, the, the, the one thing we haven't covered, and again, I, I, don't, I don't want to forget this, I saw my glasses here, is the importance of safety. The labels for all these products is going to specify that you wear shoes with socks, so not, not sandals like what I'm wearing right now, shoes with socks, long pants, long sleeve shirt, and gloves, and gloves. And you guys know what's coming next. Out of an abundance of caution, I always like to wear safety glasses anytime I'm applying liquids to my lawn. So just out of, just to be safe, you wanna make sure you're covered up. Most of this stuff is not really highly toxic, but it's just better to keep it off your skin if at all possible. So again, shoes with socks, long pants, long sleeve shirt, and gloves. And if you do that, you're gonna be, you're gonna be just fine. Also be sure that if you're using the, uh, the Yard Mastery sprayer, be sure to rinse it out once you're done, and then you should be good, and you're good to go. The nice thing about this sprayer, not to plug the sprayer too much, is that the tips that I mentioned as far as the flood jet tip, it comes with it. Like everything you need to be able to spray these products and get a great result is included with this if you decide to go with the sprayer. So something to keep in mind. All right guys, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me see what questions we have here, if any that we can run through here really quick and, uh, and, and see what you guys are all about. If you guys are enjoying this format for videos, uh, let me know. I'm just, you hit me, you know, give me a like. I really, really appreciate it. All right, so let's see who we got here in the chat. We got uh, Papa Mo's Low saying, hey, what's going up? We got Richard, Brett's Grasscapade. Man, listen, I've, I've made it in the world. When, when Brett is checking in on a Sunday afternoon, I'm somebody in the world. Mm-hmm. It's pretty awesome. All right. Next up, we got Michael C. saying hello there, what's going on? Simone Jackson, what's going on, Simone? Hopefully you're doing well. Airland is in the house. Uh, let's see, Michael C. is saying army worms are back. Ugh, yeah, army worms are terrible. They are horrible. They, they, I think they're worse than grubs, in my opinion. Um, as far as how to prevent or prevent and or get rid of them, a celeprin. That's what I'm, I'm going to tell you to go with. Get a celeprin. We carry it uh, here at the Golf Course Lawn Store. You can get it in granular form or liquid form. If you've got a backpack spare, get the liquid form because here's why. Uh, the liquid, if you, if you are, all you're treating is an active army worm infestation. So that you already know they're in your lawn, they're already there. You can back the rate down to, I think memory serves me, is, is 0 0.05 fluid ounces. So it's not very much, a very, very low application rate just for army worms. And it's gonna work a bit faster than the, than the granular will. So either one will work, but if you just, all you care about is army worms and you wanna get it done as quickly as possible, check the Golf Course Lawn Store. We got a Celeprin uh, SC in stock. It comes in a container that looks like this and uh, that will get you taken care of, squared away as far as, as far as army worms go. Because I know they are horrible. You don't, man, you don't want army worms in your lawn. Like literally in days, they could destroy a lawn. Sometimes faster than that, but in days. All right, we got Martin, Martin Saldivar saying, I have clover infested lawn, what options do you recommend? Depends on, um, I mean a three-way will a lot of times will knock back clover, something like Triad Select 
will uh, will take will will knock back clover. If you have a warm season lawn, uh, Celsius is going to be my go-to. If you have a cool season lawn, uh, Tenacity. This guy here. And again, we have this in stock. The links are going to be links in the description um, on the golf course lawn store. The one thing to keep in mind with Tenacity, and, and you know, it's really not spoken to a, enough. Tenacity is a very good herbicide. It is very effective. Works really well, especially if you're using it as a post-emergent. You mix some surfactant with it. Does well. The one thing you have to be you know, cognizant of when you use tenacity is that it is going to discolor the air, discolor portions of the lawn. So the areas where you spray, um, the the lawn or the the weeds are going to turn white. They're not like 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 light yellowish white, like bleach white. It's going to look like you had like you like you took a like Clorox and dumped it in different spots of your lawn. So it looks kind of unsightly. If you can deal with that, if that doesn't bother you too much, because you know typically once it starts to happen, a few weeks later the lawn, you know, it's gone. The lawn is is, is starting to recover. But that's just the one thing you have to be, you know, you have to be aware of when you use tenacity. Is it is going to discolor the grass if you decide to go with that option. But if you have cool season grass, I'm going to say tenacity. Warm season grass, then go with Celsius. And again, we got both of them uh, in stock at the golf course lawn store. All right, let's take a few more questions here. Uh, we got here, Demer, Demo's in the house. What's going on, man? Hopefully you're hanging out. Enjoy you. Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. I appreciate you, sir. Appreciate you, sir. And then you say, um, Tom um, Hoppenkamp says, I like Syngenta's Soil Temp website. Link is above. Thank you for that, uh, Thomas. There's, there's tons of different ways to do it. You can use the you can use Google. You can use Syngenta's, which I have done in the past. You're right. It is a really good site. And then, or you can just measure it yourself. You can't measure yourself. I'll take my hat off because it's, it's getting shaded and I'm, I'm going to be even darker than I already am. <laughs> All right. So let's see what other quick questions we got here before we close it out. We got Alex Lee, YouTube royalty in the house. And then uh, um, the silent one says three hundred dollars a bottle. Yeah, it's expensive, man. It's this, here's the thing: it's expensive, but literally, it's highly unlikely that you would use all this up yourself. So it really makes sense if you have friends that are also into their lawn that you can share it with, you can split it with, and then it becomes a lot more palatable, right? It's not you know to, to buy a bottle of Spectacle Flow just for your lawn unless you have a really large property. It's kind of tough, right? It's kind of tough to, to really justify that because you figure at 0.1, at 0.10, let me think about this. So it's, uh, let's see, 0.2 is the rate for um, hybrid Bermuda, right? So that is 5,000 square feet for an ounce, right? And it's 18 ounces in that bottle. So do the math on that. That's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot, a lot of coverage. And consider you're only going to be using this really twice a year. This bottle is going to last a really long time. So it only makes sense if you're going to be you have a large property or you're going to be sharing it with somebody else. That's when it, it makes sense. But it's an X, as far as everything on this table for warm season grass, this is it. I mean, this is, this is money. This is, this is, this is the top shelf stuff at the bar. This is, this is uh, spectacle flow is as good as it gets as far as pre-emergent goes, in my opinion. All right, Danny G says, what can I use for crabgrass oh, in over 100 degrees? Man, listen, anything that you spray over 100 degrees, there's going to be challenges with. I mean, chlor chlorac is really good against crabgrass, but it's going to injure the lawn if you spray it at, at those kind of temperatures. You know what I mean? It's, it's unfortunately, the best way to keep crabgrass out of your lawn is to prevent it in the first place using the stuff that's here. If you're at 100 degree temps, Man, I, I mean, unless you're willing to take a hit to a hit to the portion areas of your lawn where it is, you know, I mean, Clark will do it, but it's going to injure your lawn. You're going to discolor your grass. Um, you know, I, I, I mean, if you, depending on the rates that you use, it, it, if you went lighter, it more than likely will not kill your lawn or the areas that you spray, but it's definitely going to discolor it if you spray at 100 degrees. So there's not really a good, great option I have for you that's going to be focused for crabgrass that's not going to, that's going to work well at uh, 100 degree uh, temperatures, unfortunately. So... Sorry, I don't have a better answer for you on that one, uh, Danny G. All right, Eric Leon is here. He says, Ron, I missed the beginning. When are you doing this? September? Yeah, so September, I'm going to be doing the, probably the, the, the end of this month. The end of this month, early September is when I'm going to be dropping some spectacle flow. This is what's going to go down this time. I'm going I'm to go top shelf this time, this year. Uh, yeah, so uh, sep late, early August, um, September time frame. Because here's the thing, guys. <laughs> and I didn't say this in, in, the, in the main show, but it's important. All this stuff is called pre-emergent, meaning that the, the clues in the name, you want to apply it prior to the weeds emerging. So when it comes to any of the stuff you see here, a little bit early is better than a little bit late. So early is better. It has to be, it has to be applied and in the soil to really prevent weeds from being, you know, for, for, to do what it needs to do as far as keeping weeds out of your lawn. So even though I say, you know, soil temps need to be say 70 degrees going south, if you, if soil temps are 72 degrees, 73 degrees, close enough, you know, get, go out there and get it down. A little bit early is not going to hurt you. Late will, because really, unless you have crabgrass germinating, 
um, um, really um, dithiopyr, unless you have crabgrass uh, germinating and you're using dithiopyr, once the stuff starts growing, you know, most of this stuff is not going to be very effective. Um, Spectacle will help some, but the rest of the, the, the pre-emergence here, prodiamine, is not going to do a whole lot against a weed that is already actively growing. So a little bit early, better than a bit late for sure. All right, Sunny Bermuda saying, hey, Ron, what's going on, Sunny? What's going on, sir? Thanks for coming to hang out this, this glorious Sunday afternoon. And he says, I am having a hard time finding Spectacle Flow. Check Amazon. I've got a link in the description. If you like supporting the show, you can check the link in the description. Uh, there is a link there to it. You can pick it up. It's going to be around 300 bucks a bottle. And again, I would split it, man. If you have some, some friends that are going to be, that are into their lawns, split it. Don't, you know, split it with them and see if you can, you can you recoup some of your costs. Because you're highly unlikely to go through all of this on your own unless you've got a really big property. So just something to, to keep in mind keep in mind there. All right, uh, Teddy G says, happy Sunday. What's going on, Teddy? Thanks for coming to hang out, sir. And then a few last questions here. We, uh, we got um, Randy says, I have a very thick thatch buildup in St. Augustine. Looks like someone overseed in my lawn. What's the best way to break it down? Um, you know, I don't know if scalping St. Augustine is a thing, um, but anything you can do to help thin it out will help. Anything you do to help thin it out will, uh, will help. Another thing you can do too as well, Randy, is if you, um, you know, you said the lawn is thick, but if you are not bagging your clippings, perhaps start doing that. So you're not throwing more debris into the lawn and making, you know, you know, accelerating the thatch problem even more. So just something to keep in mind, you might want to consider that. Like don't, like start bagging your clippings and um, I'm trying to think with, with, uh, with St. Augustine, I think a scalp is going to be your way to go. Like turf raking is just going to make a huge mess of St. Augustine, verticutting, Verti you might be able to verticut it. But I, I, of the two, of the two, I would say scalping and or verticutting would be what I'd be what I would go with or would be most likely to lean towards. If you turf rake St. Augustine, it's going to be a colossal mess. It's going to thin it out, but it's going to make a really really big mess due to the way it grows. All right. Next up is Terry Smith says my yard is overgrown with crabgrass. What should I do? So it depends if you if your grass if your lawn is like primarily crabgrass and you don't really have grass like grass per se that you that you're trying to hang on to like I had a viewer last year VMH that had that issue he was in Texas or he's still in Texas he was he's still in Texas um, and he was Mr. Crabgrass so we used to call him on the live stream Captain Crabgrass and he and Quinn Clorac got on a first name basis so if if you're the situation where you know your lawn is more crabgrass than grass and you're just trying to get rid of it to where you can you know, you get the lawn under control where you're either going to sod or seed or do something to, to, you know, put the grass in that you want. Conchloride could be the way to go. I mean, that with higher temps, it is going to injure the grass. But given that, you know, your, your lawn is primarily that, you don't, you may not care about the grass that's, um, that, that is, that's in your lawn, um, you know, that could be an option. So there's something to consider. But again, when temps get higher, Quinclorac is, um, is one of those guys that's gonna, is gonna ding your lawn, is gonna, gonna give you a hit to color. So something to keep in mind. And the thing with Quinclorac, um, whereas, whereas with, um, take like Tenacity or Celsius, or, you know, if you pick any, a lot of other post-emergent herbicides that work, that really call for a non-ionic surfactant, um, Quinclorac really works better with a methylated seed oil. So it's a bit more aggressive, but, um, but so read the label for that because there are, whereas with this, with a surfactant or non ionic surfactant, you know, you don't have to be super, super particular as far as um, how much you use. I mean, you want to be reasonable, right? With methylated seed oil, if you read the, the Conclorac label, they do call out exactly like how much you should be using with, with, uh, with a certain amount of Conclorac. So just something to keep in mind if you are going that route. If you're going that route. Okay, got a few more questions here. And then we will uh, we will close out. All right, let's see. Seb Sa Seba Brown says I have Bermuda and crabgrass is attempting to take over. What do you recommend at this point in the season? So Bermuda, you have Bermuda and crabgrass trying to take over. What kind of grass do you have? So you gave me two parts, but you didn't give me the most important part because I, before I can recommend a herbicide, I got to know what kind of grass you're trying to keep. Um, Okay, if it's, I'm assuming it's a cool season grass. I'm assuming that. If it's a cool season grass, then tenacity, uh, tenacity can work. But again, it's gonna just, it's gonna discolor your existing lawn. I'm trying, it, it's, it's, it'll be helpful, Seba, if you can tell me what kind of grass you have, because otherwise, I'm kind of shooting in the dark as far as our recommendation goes. Um, let's see. You says I'm on a budget, by the way. Okay, so in that case, let me see. What are you dealing with? Crabgrass. Uh, so. I mean, if you if you're trying to new if you're trying to keep your existing grass, you have to use a selective herbicide. So that takes glyphosate off the table. And if you, for crabgrass, there are a few options. Like there's spectricide that will work. It has conchloric in it that will work against crabgrass. 
Um, but if, if you're trying to get rid of the Bermuda too, that's where we run into a problem. You know what I mean? Because the stuff, the stuff that will kill, stuff that kills Bermuda and won't kill everything else is not cheap. Like Fusil Aid is, a, is a, something that comes to mind that will, Fusil Aid 2, that will damage and eventually kill Bermuda after a few rounds of application. Um, and it's safe for a lot of cool and grass types, but it's not inexpensive, you know? So it depends on what your, what your, um, you know, what your budget is. So it's crabgrass, the crabgrass we can do with spectricide, but um, the Bermuda non-selectively, or, or selectively is gonna be a challenge without getting into some of the more um, expensive herbicides, unfortunately. All right, Exported Africa says, anyone else in the Atlanta area into lawns and wants to split the chems? I need a lawn buddy. There you go. You guys hit each other up and work something out where you can, um, you know, get some, get you some, some spectacle flow and, uh, and not, not break the bank doing it. All right, next up we got Daddy G says, uh, true, thank you very much, bro. I'm going to wait till spring. Uh, Ron, Mary J says, good buddy, good to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out, Mary. I really do appreciate you. Thanks for that. Uh, Fairway Bermuda is in the house. Daryl, guys, if you guys haven't been following Daryl's content, he's new to YouTube, but he's been putting out some good stuff. Definitely go subscribe to him and watch his content. He does he does a great job, um, you know, showing you just like grassroots lawn care, showing you everything he's doing. It's really really good stuff. So check his channel out. All right, uh, Pablo Moslo says great info as usual, Ron. Thank you, thank you for that, Pablo Moslo. I appreciate it. Thank you for for watching. It's Lacroix, guys. It's water. It's 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 like sparkling water. It's not beer. <laughs> All right, next up we got um, 864 Tahoe says, I have very bad carpet grass and Dallas grass in my Bermuda grass. Any suggestions? I'm trying to think of what to use for carpet grass. I don't, I don't know off the top of my head on that one. Dallas grass is going to be dig it out because there's not really a herbicide that you are supposed to use on residential lawns that will kill Dallas grass. There is one that will do it, um, but it's not labeled for use on residential lawns, unfortunately. They pull, they pull that. Um, and for carpet grass, I don't know off the top of my head on that one, um, um, 864 Tahoe, look into Revolver. I, you know, Revolver is really good against grassy weeds. I don't think Celsius will do that. I don't know off the top of my head what will do that other than, but if I, had to, if I, if I were going to start looking, Revolver is where I would go first. I'd look at that. There are probably other herbicides, but that's the first one that comes to mind. Michael C says, suggestions for cool season ground ivy problem. Um, uh, Michael, uh, I mean... Tenacity or um, try spectricide. Tenacity will work, but it's going to discolor your lawn. It's going to discolor the areas that you spray it. Um, you can try spectricide. That's going to be a little bit, it's going to be less, a little less expensive, and it's also going to be lighter as far as on the amount of active ingredients. So it's going to be a little bit more gentle on the lawn, but you may take a couple of applications, a couple of rounds of it to knock it back and get rid of it. So if you go with the spectricide route, don't think it's going to be one and done. It's going to be a few rounds to really get rid of the ground ivy, but it's, it's not likely to just color your lawn like tenacity will. Yeah, Terry says, I'm in Arizona. The temps are still 105. Yeah, man, that's, that's, that's rough. Um, that's, uh, that does make it tough as far as herbicides at those temperatures. I mean, you have to kind of decide. If you're just spot spraying and you can take you know, a kit to the green and just the airs where you're killing the weeds off, that could be an option. But if you are like blanket spraying the lawn, man, 105 degree temps is going to be hard on, uh, on, on grass with any kind of herbicide. And uh, Wesley Scott says got to remove the crabgrass. Lots of options for that. Quinclorac, uh, anything with quinclorac in it is going to work great. Uh, just read the label. That's, that's going to, and quinclorac can be used on cool and warm season grass. So that's an option that, that does, uh, does a good job. All right. And our next question here we got from uh, Seba says, I currently have Bermuda, I want to keep Bermuda, but the crabgrass is becoming more and more visible. So if you have Bermuda, you want to keep Bermuda, then, then uh, Conclorac is going to be your jam. So I, th I misunderstood. I thought you wanted to get rid of the Bermuda and um, the crabgrass. So in your case, in your case, Seba, um, go with, um, go with just Conclorac. That's going to, that'll, that'll work well. Conclorac with a little methylated seed oil will do the trick. That's, that's really the, in my opinion, the best herbicide for crabgrass. You just have to be, um, be cognizant of like temps when you spray it. And it's starting to cool off now, so you should be, you should be okay. Just, uh, just, just read the label, follow the label, use an MSO with it, and should be good to go. All right, Wesley R says, Ron, I have a, a clover and dollarweed problem. What will work to get rid of it? I'm in Gwinnett County. I don't have it on the table here, but Celsius is great. I'm assuming that because you're in Gwinnett County, you got zoysia or Bermuda, so you got a warm season grass, in which case Celsius will work. If you're on a budget, you can go with like um, spectricide, um, but really, uh, if you, Celsius is a better product. Celsius with some surfactant and away you go. You're going to be, you'll be good to go. Take, it could take about 10 days before you see results, but that will get it done. 
that will get it done. All right. Uh, Michael says, thanks again for the awesome and have a great evening. Thanks so much, Michael. I appreciate you coming to hang out for a little bit. Appreciate you guys. Harpo Fashion says, I'm going to overseed an area next year, so no pre-emergent. Can I use post-emergent all year effectively? Yes. Yeah, so if your goal is to seed in, at, within any kind of a three to four month period, then, um, then post-emergents are what you're going to want to use. You're not going to want to use prodiamine, dithiapir. You definitely don't want to use spectacle. Like, this is eight months of coverage. So you don't want to put this stuff down at all if you're planning to seed anytime soon. But prodiamine or dithiapir, either one of those guys, Three to, if in three to four months you're trying to do it, you should be good. But if you're going to be doing your seeding project sooner than that, um, heartfelt, then in your case, you just want to go with post-emergent herbicides. Helicopter. Airwolf. You guys should see it here in the frame, maybe. Well, maybe not. It's pretty cool. It actually does look like Airwolf. All right. Uh, let's see. It's a bell. All right. So next up, we have... Um, we have a... JCL says, thanks, Ron, you're very welcome. Uh, Drew Yu says, what's up, Ron? Can you mix Spectacle Flow with Prodiamine on Centipede? I don't know why you, I have to look at the label. I don't know why you would, though. There's no need to. There's no, there's no need to mix any other pre-emergent with Spectacle Flow. There's no need to. I mean, this, this is, in my opinion, the alpha and the omega of, warm, of, of, of a pre-emergent for, uh, for warm season grass. There's no reason to add another pre-emergent along with this. Check the label because um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head if um, Centipede is okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure a thousand percent on that one, so check the label on it. But, uh, but no, reason, no need to mix Prodiamine with this. This by itself is going gonna, is gonna to cover you. You're good to go. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, Tom, A6 Forces is going to be a lot of holes with all the Dallas grass digging up. Tom Miller says, I just applied Celsius and certainly combo today. Nice. I like it. As you suggested, I have Bermuda and Zoysia. Would Prodiamine prevent the weeds? Yes. So in your case, you've already got a great post-emergent program. You know, as far as herbicides for that, you're good to go there. Go with just some straight Prodiamine, either in the five-pound jug or the you know, five ounce if you've got a smaller lawn. Mix it at you know, half rate, 0.4 ounces. You need a scale to measure that out. 0.4 ounces. Um, per thousand square feet with a gallon of water and your money. You got your post-emergence and your pre-emergence covered. You're good to go. You're good to go on that one, sir. No, uh, no, you, you're, you're good on, you're definitely good on post-emergent uh, herbicides. Okay, uh, Greg Moore says, why not coastal? Can't really get it anymore, unfortunately, uh, Greg. That's why. So really what I'm doing, Greg, it's a great point. Um, I am basically recreating, he's, the helicopter's really flying right towards me. I am basically recreating coastal with um, Princep, um, whoa, with Princep, Image, and um, Prodiamine. So these three, the Prodiamine, Image, and um, Princep, are what are in Coastal, but now they don't sell it anymore in the, uh, the 64 ounce container. It's only in two and a half gallons, which is like 400 and something dollars, a lot of money. And there, I did get some reports from some people where, um, depending on how long the 64 ounce Coastal had been sitting around, they had some issues with it like solidifying. So this is all like top shelf stuff. You're not gonna have any problems or any kind of weird interactions. They're all gonna be sep kept separate and that way you only combine them when you're about to use them. So that's a great way to go. Sim is, so Princep, Image, and um, Prodiamine, you're basically making Coastal on your own. But that's the reason why on that, Greg, because you, ca you can't really get Coastal in the 64 ounce anymore. You're very, very welcome, Tom. Thank you for hanging out in the live stream. LJ says, in Cobb County, when should I put down my pre-emergent? End of this month, early September. So August, September is the time frame to do your fall pre-emergent. Really, the most correct answer is whenever soil temps are, are, tre are trending towards 70 degrees or are at 70 degrees, going, going cooler. So late August, early September is when that normally is in our area. The thing, though, LJ, is a bit early is better than a bit late when it comes to pre-emergence. Just keep that in mind. A little bit early is not going to hurt you. A bit late, you're not going to get the, the benefits of it. So something to keep in mind. All right, and our last question, last comment we have here. What do you recommend for Nuts Edge? Image doesn't seem to, I'm going to finish with the question, doesn't seem to work. The best product, in my opinion, for any of the sedges, sedges, Kalinga, Globe Sedge, Purple Kalinga, green, I mean, all of them, is a product called Certainty. Certainty, but it's, the thing is, it's only for warm season grass. So that's the only, the only caveat I got I to say here. Uh, if you are looking for an excellent, excellent, excellent product, in my opinion, the best product for sedges in warm season grass, it's tough to beat certainty. We do carry it here at the Golf Course Lawn Store. Just go to the herbicide section. You can find it right there. Um, but it's, it's, it's devastating against sedges. Like it's, whereas like Celsius, to kind of go off on a little tangent here, whereas you'll take Celsius, right? And it'll begin to kill a weed and it'll, you know, 10 days later, 14 days later, it's going to be really discolored. It's going to start 
really hating life and eventually it's going to die off. In 14 days, like two weeks after applying certainty to sedges, like they literally are brown and shriveled up. They're almost like, like just like they're disintegrating. I mean, it, it is really, really nasty um, on sedges and it doesn't, doesn't hurt Bermuda. That's the beautiful thing, right? Because it's easy to find stuff that will kill the weeds. The magic trick is not killing your grass in the process. So if you've got the budget for it, Trey, Certainty is what I, want, I would recommend. We carry it out at, here at the Golf Course Lawn Store. It's a little bit more expensive, but it is, in my opinion, by far the best product for sedges in warm season um, lawns. Okay, Frank says, I missed you. Back up. Okay, let me check your real Frank. I'm backing up. I'm backing up. I'm backing up. I'm backing up. Okay, we got Frank says, crabgrass and goosegrass in centipede help. These guys will, I'm trying to think, this combination, these post-emergent combination will go after, will target both crabgrass and goosegrass, the simazine, um, simazine um, um, and the amazequin. So if you're, if you're going to, you can buy a post-emergent if you want, Frank. Um, I think Revolver will do co um, goosegrass and a few others will. But if you're going to be applying this anyway, uh, this combination, the Prodiamine, Image, and, Sim and uh, the Princep, um, will like it's labeled for targeting goosegrass. So the priming is not really doing it, but these two, this particularly the Princep will. So if you're going to be out doing pre-emergent anyway, you can save some some time and money and just do this combination, and then you'll eventually get your um, your goosegrass as well. So, but there there are post-emergents that'll work faster, but this is another option that will save you money for not having to buy like a post-emergent herbicide just to go after crabgrass. So got you covered. And then our last comment of the evening is something while you sipping to Disney says, how often should you spray Queen Clorac to kill torpedo grass? That stuff is like a cancer on my Bermuda. I've never dealt with, with torpedo grass personally myself, um, flipping while you sipping, but I'd say give it three weeks between applications. Three weeks. So apply it, give it three weeks, and then see, and see how it's doing, and then another application should, should, get, the, should get it done. Um, make sure you are using a methylated seed oil with it when you are um, using Queen Clorac for best results. So if you, you spray it by itself, it's going to work, but the um, the etching effect that, that that MSO has to the the, the leaf to the to the, the weed you're trying to target is really going to help it work well. So make sure you read the label and use an MSO along with it if you're going to um, to use Quin Clorac. Um, anything up there to take care of spurge? These guys will prevent spurge. So like Prodiamine or Dithiapir will prevent spurge. Uh, after the fact, spurge is not really that hard to kill. Like any, like a Triad Select will do it, Celsius will do it. There's a lot of different herbicides. Spectricide will do it. There's a lot of herbicides that will kill spurge that's already growing in your lawn. To prevent it, any of the pre-emergents that I mentioned here will, uh, will do the trick. So, but, so that, that, that's not a tough one to get rid of. And then we got here, uh, Chris says, I know you don't do cool season lawns. Do you recommend a YouTuber that's good with Kentucky uh, bluegrass? Who has Kentucky bluegrass? I don't know. Uh, I think Ryan does, right? Doesn't Ryan Nor have a KBG lawn? So uh, yeah, just reach out to him and or watch his content. I know he does a lot of K Kentucky bluegrass stuff. I uh, watch him, but I, I um, yeah, but that's about, that's, that's the best I can give you on cool season grass. And then uh, LG with a super chat, man. Thank you so much, LG. I appreciate you. Thanks, man. I'm not sure this is going to work. Super chat received. It worked, I think. Yeah. So thank you so much. I appreciate the, uh, the love and support, sir. Thank you for the, little, for the super chat. 10 bucks. This is, uh, and then we got, am I available for hire? Um, everything I'm talking about, I mean, you can, you can email me if you want. I will do a Zoom call. But as far as actually going out to lawns, I don't, I don't really do that. I don't, have, I don't have the time, frankly. So if you, if you have a specific question, you can email me, ron at golfcourselawn.com is my email address, and I'll do my best to help you out. Um, but then after that, it's going to be a Zoom call, or you can join the Golf Course Lawn Academy uh, at golfcourselawn.com, or go to the Golf Course Lawn store. We also have it listed there. That's a, a way to get more direct access to me, uh, because that's where we have our private Facebook group, and those guys get priority as far as questions or any help that they need uh, as far as when it comes with me working directly with them. So hope that helps, sir. Hope that helps. And then it says, I have some thatch in the zoysia. I do. I got I to gotta vertic up the zoysia or do something. I got to do something to kind of clean it out. I know. I know. I know. Thank you, guys. You got good eye. Good eye, Tim. Well, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I truly, truly do appreciate it. I know this is something different. I want to talk about pre-emergent and versus making my normal video of like, you know, just overly highly overproduced, just to kind of talk through it, talk through the important parts that, that I think are going to help you get a good result this fall and also into the spring with pre-emergent applications and then take some of your questions. So if you guys enjoyed this video or enjoyed this, this format, definitely let me know. Give me a like, give me a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys have no idea how much it really means to me. And I will see you guys next time. The links to everything else, Yard Mastery Spare, and everything you see on the table are in the description of this video. Thanks again. You are dismissed. We'll check you guys next time.